Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTNHD, and yes, our final, final episode with Build Me, episode 5. And uh, today is all about connecting all our power supply cables as well as our LED cables on our motherboard um, and also picking an operating system. I'm going to boot the computer up so we can see how it looks with the BIOS setting. We're going to configure the BIOS setting, check out the BIOS and see what kind of nice settings and features that the motherboard gives us which is also cool because you always want to configure the BIOS settings such as uh, uh, to see if you enable the VT mode or power options and all that stuff. If you want to set that stuff up before you start installing your operating system. Uh, so let's uh, let's dive into it. Alright, so you can see guys, I already plugged everything up and uh, one of the things I can just tell you off the bat is you need to keep all the documents that the motherboard as well as the tower uh, come with. Uh, the reason why is because the motherboard comes with a nice map that allows you or gives you a uh, run through of where the cable is supposed to be. Okay, I can't really tell you, okay, this cable goes here, this cable goes here, because each motherboard, each tower is different. So off the bat, the big one right here is uh, actually your power supply, your ATX power supply. This is what supports your uh, motherboard power. The, the other second big one right here is also an ATX 12 volt power supply that also power supplies um, the, the, the motherboard. Uh, we also have the fan. The fan has its own um, port right here that powers it on. Uh, this fan right here which will cool the entire tower. This cable actually goes right next to the power supply. Eventually I'm going to upgrade this tower with two 12 millimeter fans on the top so I can get more airflow to it. Uh, this port right here is actually the USB 3.0 which is in the front panel. Uh, this cable right here is the power supply for the front audio. And all these little cables right here are for your LED such as your, um, just to look at it, is for your power supply. Um, the LED for your hard drive and all that good stuff so that's pretty cool uh, the nice blue cable right here is for your hard drive and I placed it right here because uh, depending on your motherboard it's numbered mine's is number two zero one two three four five so it's uh, that way but you two four six I could do six hard drives pretty soon I'm gonna upgrade the hard drives because I want to do like a raid and uh, get like a three or four or five terabyte, so I pr pretty cool, right? And that's it. That's it with all the cabling. Now for operating system. Now I know a lot of you guys are probably saying, "Oh, install a Linux or Unix platform." Ugh, I know. I would love to do that, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to install a Windows operating system. I know you guys are already hating me and giving me a bunch of dislikes and all that stuff, but the reason why I'm putting Windows on it is because. Uh, I normally at my job at my client sites. That's what I do. I do Windows. I have to support Windows, but I do install Hyper-V or VM Workstation to create virtual machines. So most likely I'm gonna have a bunch of virtual machines for you guys, especially Linux platform virtual machines. And the way that I'm installing the operating system, because this particular machine does not have a CD-ROM, is USB. So uh, I actually created this USB, a bootable USB using, I believe, uh, Rufus. And I have the ISO 8.1, Windows 8.1. And I am putting Windows 8.1. I oh, know. Because uh, pretty soon Windows 10 is going to be free. So I want this machine to be able to be upgradable when the Windows 10 free version comes out. So uh, let's put this up, power it on, and see how the BIOS looks. All right, guys, so we have the tower hooked up. I have a VGA hooked up to my computer, or actually my TV. And uh, I have a mouse, and I have a keyboard, and we have our trusty USB. So let's power it on. Oh, look at that blue lighting. Awesome. Let's see, let's make sure it starts on. So let me turn the TV on. Make sure we're able to view something. There it goes. Awesome. So I'm going to press delete. So right now, it's checking. This is, this is basically BIOS. BIOS is checking everything that it needs to do. 
uh, it sees that it has the network controller, the, a the ACPI controller, display controller, it has all that stuff. But disk boot failure, insert system disk and press enter. So I don't have a system disk. I do have a uh, USB which I'm going to be plugging in pretty soon. But I have to go inside the BIOS setting to make sure that I'm able to do a bootable, uh, I can boot into a USB, right? So what I'm going to do is a control alt delete and when you do it all control delete what's going to happen is going to reboot the machine and you get a nice little setting right there you got to press the delete or F12 delete is to get into BIOS depending on what machine you're doing with each motherboard is different the delete it normally takes you to the BIOS which is this BIOS right here F2 actually takes you to BIOS and Dell settings I believe uh, function F2 or function 2 for some machines will also take you to BIOS on this particular um, motherboard model, delete takes you to BIOS, F12 takes you to, to uh, boot menu, which is pretty cool because I'm going to be needing that. So right now we are inside our BIOS. This is so beautiful. Uh, first things first, let's check out what kind of uh, settings this motherboard or the CPU has. So uh, the first option, the MB Intelligent Tweaker, the MIT, which allows you to change the CPU's clock and voltage. Ooh, that's awesome. So let's press enter and then check this out. So you can actually configure the IGX configuration. I can press enter on that one. Uh, internal graphics mode, which right now is UMA. Uh, UMA frame buffer size is in auto, but I can actually configure that to, uh, to a, actually a gig. I'm going to keep it as auto for now. Um, let's check out the internal graphics mode. We can disable that. Onboard VGA, connect VGA, you can actually uh, disable that or auto, you can do a D sub DVI or D sub HDMI. This is an onboard VGI outboard connector. So uh, by default, if you keep it auto, whatever plug you have, HDMI or DVI or VGA, it will automatically become the default uh, display port. So I'm not going to designate anything on that. VGA, VGA core clock control. And I don't need that as audio auto now. So let's escape out of that. CPU clock ratio is actually 3400 megahertz. So if I hit auto on that, you're actually able to configure it up to, whoa, whoa. Whoa, look at that. I'm able to do the clock ratio up to X35. Right now is at uh, X34. It's on auto, but it's actually reading 34. So I can bump it up to 3500 megahertz, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, CPU North Bridge frequency, which is at 22, uh, mega, 2200 megahertz. And I believe the highest that I could go on that would be 20, which is the highest right now. Uh, core performance boost is enabled. So there's a lot of stuff. The CPU frequency is 200. Let me see. This, oh man, this is so much, so much. Memory clock right now is 8 gigs with 1600. Uh, I will be upgrading the memory pretty soon on this machine, maybe up to 32 gigs. And I think that's the capacity of the motherboard. But again, if you purchase a motherboard that could go higher, go for it. Uh, again, I was trying to keep within my budget range and that was $500, under $500 and the motherboard that I got was perfect and but this MIT is awesome I will be playing with this uh, setting a lot so let's get out of here and check out the other rest you got the standard CMOS features uh, as you can see I have my uh, IDE channel 2 master which is the hard drive that we put in uh, it has the date already configured automatically, so that's pretty smart. It's, it is May 25, 2015, and it has the time frame, but uh, uh, that is uh, Army military time. Advanced BIOS settings is basically the same thing as MIT. All the cores are enabled by default. I'm not doing that. What else? Uh, first boot device, second boot device, third boot device. This is the USB. HDD, there you go. Look, I could do Legacy LAN if I'm booting on the LAN. I'm probably going to do that later on. So that's awesome. I think, I think I'm think i set to boot into the USB. I think USB HDD is 
uh, this guy right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this guy in front of our panel right there. Just plug it up. Right now I'm checking the fans, making sure everything is working properly. So this is what I'm doing right now. I'm looking inside the box, making it, making sure that the fans are running. Remember, I got two fans. I got one 12 millimeter fan at the back panel, plus the fan that's running on the power supply. And I, I am going to order two more 12 millimeter fans on the top of the tower, so I can have that air pushing out and keeping it nice and cool. So I'm just making sure everything sounds perfect. Uh, it's running so far like a champ, so I'm extremely happy for that. Uh, the BIOS, let's get out of this right here. Integrated peripherals, uh, on chip SATA control is enabled, on chip SATA type is native IDE, onboard LAN functions, on band. Oh, this C. So, onboard LAN boot ARAM is disabled. So, eventually, I'm going to turn that on because I do want to boot over the LAN on that. Uh, onboard USB 3.0 controller, audio functions, everything is enabled in the front panel, which is by default, all that stuff should be enabled for you. But if you want to disable some of this stuff, this is where you go. You go inside the integrated peripherals. Again, depending on your motherboard and CPU, this will be a little different for you guys. Uh, power management uh, setup, this is where you uh, set up your uh, management, you set up your management for your power supply. Uh, USB wake up from S3, this is enabled, uh, modern ring resume, disabled, this is power on mice, uh, power on by mouse, power on by keyboard, so those are two cool features, that's pretty cool, um, yeah, so I'm going to leave that as is, you got the PNP PCI configuration, which is only one configuration, so I'm going to leave that alone, uh, PC health status, display the CPU system temperature and fan, so right now, let's check out this. So the hardware thermal control is enabled. Uh, recess case open status is disabled. So that means if the case is open by any chance, it will reset. Uh, case is open, yes. Uh, V-Core 1.308 volts, DDR 1.5, good, 12 volts. So the current system temperature is only 35 Celsius. Current CPU temperature is 45. Celsius current CPU fan speed is 3,082 RPMs. Current system fan speed is only 873. It looks like the fan speed and the system fan speed are all going up, going up, little up and down, up and down. So that's pretty cool. So everything is working. Uh, I can actually enable CPU warning temperature and as well as the fan failure warning. I'll probably do that later on because I would like to at least know when that's going to go critical, right? Uh, and then you have uh, more options over here. You got load fail safe defaults. You got load optimized defaults. Set supervisor password. Set user password and save and exit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save exit and hit yes, enter. And I think it's F12 that I need to get in. Got to make sure F12 and N is for the EU EQ flash. Q flash. That's pretty cool. So here we go. So this is our boot menu. Remember, to get into the boot menu, you had to press F12. A lot of computers, you have to press F12 to get into the boot menu. And I want to boot into USB FDD. What is it? USB FDD or USB HDD? Hmm. Which one is it? I know it's not zip and I know it's not CD-ROM. Uh, front. Let's try F. Let's try that one. See what happens. Let's try the FDD one and see if it boots up to the USB in front. So it did pick up right there. It picked it up. Awesome. It's booting. Awesome. Awesome. It is booting into the FDD one. So we did pick up. We did pick the right one. I'm happy about that. Windows 8 logo is loading up. Eventually, we're going to see the nice little progress bar right here stating that all the files are going to be uh, uploaded so I'm extremely happy for that and uh, that's it guys that's it that's the finish that's that's the end of our uh, build me series uh, check out build me one two three and four it gives you the rundown of all the stuff that uh, we did to get to this point right here on the last build 
Hopefully you guys enjoy. It looks like the nice little loading ring is loading. Eventually we're going to get the blue screen. Yeah, this is awesome. Love this right here. This is the best part right here because everything looks like it's working. I'm going to press, uh, click on next and install and get that rolling. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this playlist series. Again, uh, in the future I will be hopefully, knock on wood, uh, doing a... Uh, gaming performance build uh, under a thousand dollars and uh, if you guys enjoy the video please hit the like button don't forget about leaving any comments below and uh, I catch you guys on the next build peace out